Hello and welcome back to Food is Fuel, a series on the subject of food and the science of nutrition. I'm Nicola Moore, a registered nutritional therapist and head of clinics at the Institute for over 10 years. Today we're going to continue looking at carbohydrates, specifically with a focus on fibre. So last week we started talking about carbohydrates and I spoke about complex versus simple carbohydrates. And if you remember, I was saying that complex carbohydrates have fiber attached to them. Now it's the fiber in carbohydrates that is so, so beneficial. You can class fiber in two different ways. You can look at it as insoluble and also soluble fiber. Both have an equally important role to play, but both play quite different roles in digestive health. Insoluble doesn't dissolve in water and therefore when you consume it, it travels straight through your digestive system and comes out the other end. Soluble fibre on the other hand does dissolve in water and it's very very useful for bulking out your stool. So both of them are actually very very good for digestive health and helping you to go to the toilet regularly which is actually a really really important thing to do if you want to be healthy. Now, as a general rule, it's good to focus on having as much soluble fiber as you can versus insoluble. And if you look at different types of foods, you can start to learn about where their balance lies in terms of the insoluble versus soluble. Both are important for digestive health, but um, too much of the insoluble, for example, can um, trigger things like IBS type symptoms. So whereas the, the soluble types tend to be a little bit kinder on the digestive system. I would say that it's worth introducing more fiber into your diet slowly if you don't eat a lot of fiber already, just because you can have some digestive changes when you change your diet in initially. When it comes to fiber, really it's all about plant-based foods. So this is vegetables, fruits, but also things like grains like um, wholemeal rice, and oats, and also looking at things like nuts and seeds, legumes, pulses, beans, anything that comes from the plant world is going to have a degree of fiber in it. But if you were to take something like a grain of wheat that hasn't been refined, so remember if it's been refined, that fiber element would have been removed. So a whole grain of wheat versus something like an apple, you can look at the coating of both of them to try and work out where's the insoluble versus soluble. Now a small grain of wheat would have a larger ratio of insoluble fiber to soluble just by virtue of the fact that it's a small grain with this coating on the outside. The apple which is larger has its skin which is the insoluble part but the inside of the apple is the soluble part of the fiber. So it's about looking at the balance there. In terms of digestively, I would say that probably the apple is going to be more helpful for you than the grain of wheat. Now the reason why fibre is so useful is that the bottom line is it's not necessarily about what the fibre does within us when it's absorbed because that isn't what the role of fibre is really there to do. We're understanding more and more that the role of fibre is actually to help with the gut and the digestive system and it's the fibres in the foods that we eat when we eat the plant-based foods that feed the bacteria in our gut otherwise known as our microbiome. So the microbiome is this wonderful range of different bacteria and all of the metabolites that they produce that they're now understanding is so, so crucial for our health and well-being. So our microbiome influences a huge amount of things to do with our health. For example, it supports how our immune system works. In fact, it's involved in educating our immune system. It's very closely associated with our nervous system as well, which is why there are lots of links now with the gut and the brain. It's also involved in how we detoxify. So when we break things down that have to be escorted out of the body, the microbiome helps with the movement of this food through the gut so that when we go to the toilet, we get rid of the things that we're supposed to be getting rid of. So our microbiome is crucial to our health and well-being. Now, the important thing with the microbiome from what we understand so far is that it's about the range and different levels of bacteria that we have. If you can switch that into what you're eating to support your microbiome, the same applies for the fiber that you eat. So the more fiber that you have from a range of different foods, 
the more types of fiber that you're exposing your gut to, which helps support the different species of bacteria. So it's all about diversity, variety, and little bits of lots of different things to ultimately support both your digestive health, but your whole health in general. So how do you get the different range of fibers into your diet in order to support your microbiome? Well, a really good practical suggestion for this is to look at the different colored foods that you're eating and aim to have a wide range of different colors from the vegetable kingdom as you can in your, da in your daily and weekly diet. So for example, when you're shopping, look for reds, oranges, greens, purples, that kind of thing. These different colors in vegetables relate to different plant chemicals known as polyphenols that are being researched for their impact on health. And one of the ways in which they impact on health is by the work they do at helping with a diverse and happy microbiome. So what three things can you do to support the amount of fiber that you eat in your diet and your microbiome? Well, number one is looking at your digestive health and identifying markers for digestive wellness for you. A really good marker is the frequency of how much you go to the toilet. So you're looking to have a bowel movement every day at least, and you need to feel that it's a good bowel movement that's nice and solid, and you feel that you're fully evacuating when you go. This is a really good sign of a healthy digestive system. If this is a problem for you, then increasing your fiber, specifically your soluble fiber, is a useful strategy for you to adopt as well as looking at other things as well, such as your height levels of hydration. Number two, focus your meals on having some plant-based foods on there to give you the fiber that you need. So really make vegetables the hero of your meals. It's all about the balance, remember. So you're already looking at the protein element that you're having, and you're maybe adding in your fats as well but bulking the rest of it up with a nice amount of plant food and fiber is gonna be very, very supportive for helping you feel healthy. Number three, take stock of the amount of fiber that you're taking from grain-based foods like the wheat versus the vegetable-based foods but with the mixture of different vegetables, but also things like legumes and pulses and nuts and seeds as well, because it's the, the grain-based can be more problematic for digestive health in some people. Having said that, um, grains like oats and brown rice for some people can be very, very supportive for their digestive health. So it's looking at the balance again and making sure you're getting a wider range of everything and not getting all of your fiber from the sources that are higher in the insoluble levels versus the soluble. So that concludes today's episode. I hope you found it helpful. Now, now we've already looked at quite a few different elements to having a healthy, balanced diet. We've covered the protein, natural fat, and now the fibers as well. All three of these things on your plate are gonna ensure that you feel nice and full and satisfied from the meals that you eat and that you're getting a wide range of nutrition to support your health. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please use the hashtag ION food as fuel. But in the meantime, I will look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye-bye.